I've got this box here and I have no idea what is in it because it is from my used shop we ship her over in America and I can't actually remember what's in it. But what I do is I have this reshipper over in America and it just basically gives me this sort of pretend address in America that allows me to order stuff in America and get it here in New Zealand. Um, because quite often you might find um, people just don't give you the, the, the shipping option to send it directly to your country. They only want to ship it to somewhere local to them in the same country in America. So this allows me to buy items I wouldn't normally have access to they would only want to sell to American addresses. And also sometimes when they do offer shipping to New Zealand, um, it's just really, really, really expensive. But they have free shipping to anywhere in America. So it actually often works out cheaper for me to ship it to my reshipper and then send it as a second stage over here to me in New Zealand. And often I can also consolidate items. So I sort of wait until I've got a whole bunch of items there at my reshipper. And then I just send them to me all in like one big box here. So you can see they've taken uh, one, two, three, four items here, and they've sent it to me as uh, just one box, and that also makes the shipping a bit cheaper for me. Um, I use Shop is just a service that New Zealand Post does, but lots of, I mean, there are other, lots and lots of other reshippers you can use. So if you're in um, a different country, you know, you, and you wanted to get some stuff from America, or I've got a reshipper address in like the UK, for instance, and you want to look into that, it's very handy if you live in a bit a smaller or more remote country with a smaller local market like I do here in New Zealand. And anyway, now I can find my stuff because I pop down here because I sent it to my mother's place because um, my office where I live at is just like, we don't really have a letterbox so I feel it's more secure to send it to this address when I'm buying more expensive stuff. And uh, oh sweet, and this is exactly why I came down because I have a shoot to mine which I'm going to be sort of running a lot of wireless and I didn't want to use too many of my 9 volt powered Legisonics because I, I, I've ordered some more 9 volt rechargeables so they haven't arrived yet. So I've only got maybe half a dozen 9 volt rechargeables at the moment. Um, but I have like 100 AA batteries. So I recently purchased a Legisonics LM B, which is this one. Sweet. And um, that one's on AA. So I'm going to use this instead of like a UM400 or whatever. Uh, anyway. Um, unbox other stuff, like I'm not actually sure what like this is for instance. And um, anyway, what was I saying about the Sonics? Oh yeah, so the Allen B is pretty cool because it is a wideband one. And, ah, uh, what's this? Ah, it also says the Sonics. I think this is a microphone. See it's from Tai or Tai? I'm not sure how you pronounce that. T-A-U-I? Tai Audio? And um, yeah, they're a really big specialist audio chain. Um, actually, are they a chain or is it just a single store? Um, yeah, they're a very popular specialist um, audio sound store for us location guys over in America. I'm not sure if it's just the box here or did I actually buy it from them? Did I buy it from them? Might have actually bought it directly from them. I can't even remember. Anyway, what was this? I think this is a lav mic. And so it comes in this little pretty case here. Uh, yeah. Looks like it's one X wired for the Sonics 5 pin. And. Oh, this is my Countryman. Yeah, this is my Countryman B6 or B3. I keep on getting them mixed up in my head. Um, which one is the B3 and the B6? But anyway, there's two popular Countryman mics, the B6 and B3. Um, they're quite well known because they're fairly, um, I think, fairly waterproof, I think. And, you know, one of them is like super tiny. It's so small, you can basically hide it in the open. So that's a really cool feature. So, yeah, I, I need a few more lav mics. So, got that. And... On the point of lav mics, I need to like look into and like analyze all my different mics because um, it's something called server bias or something. I need to look up and more into that. But basically, um, they changed the wiring schedule that Electrosonics recommends when they like switched from you know like the 200 series to like 
I think somewhere in the 400 series. I think for the UM400 was initially an old standard of wiring for the lav mic, but then like from the UM400B and newer ones or something like that, they have um, a slightly different wiring standard that they sort of recommend. Um, I can't remember what the reasons are, but I need to look into that to make sure that all my lav mics are sort of labelled right for, I used it with these ones with the older transmitter, these ones with the newer transmitters like the L and B. Um, anyway, because so yeah, just because just because they're, they're all five pin um, mini XLR at the end doesn't of course mean they're all the same, you know, because they have slightly different wiring inside the side of five pin. Anywho, oh yes, I got another man. I should probably not buy any more Little Sonics um, 200 series receivers. Because this here is a 200. Oh yeah, hi, this is the. the UCR 205D from memory, is it? Is that what it says? From memory. Why? Where does it say? Oh no, it's a UCR 200D. What do I think I got the? Anyway, um, so this is very similar to most of my Little Sonics receivers, which are basically almost all the UCR 210D, um, and I think they are like the best value ones there are. And I quite, the 200 series, because they're old enough that the prices have come down a lot, but the 200 series is still like really good quality. And what I like about the UCR 210 um, is that they actually are um, internally powered with four AA batteries. And actually what I just discovered today, you can actually power it with only two of them at once, um, which I'm thinking I might do in the future. So when I'm having external power, I'll only put two other than four AA batteries, just to save a, bit, a little bit of weight, but still have like a backup internal power to use in an emergency. Anyway, rambling on, um, this is actually the UCR 200D, it's not 210 but just 200 and that's basically the same, kind of, but it just lacks the, the side where you add the four AA batteries. So you, this can only run on external power via that uh, DC input, but I've got like a battery distribution unit in my bag so I can power this. Anyway, I probably shouldn't really buy any more like 200 series because I do own like five or six now, and <laughs> I mean they are really good value, but on the downside they're really heavy, so I should really only put my money towards getting Electrosonics SR series, which I did buy uh, one of those Electrosonics SR receivers um, last week, but that hasn't arrived yet from America either. But because um, the Electrosonics SR, they're a dual receiver and, and smaller and more compact and lightweight, so you know it's not just a smaller receiver, but it's it's doing the job with two receivers at once, so it really is quite a big weight saving in your bag. And, uh, but they're a lot more expensive than 200 series, so. Um, but yeah, I, I still have like my saved eBay searches for various 200 series, and occasionally they just come along at a price I cannot refuse, and I'm like, oh, I'll just put in one bid. I'm not gonna bid anymore, but I'll just, I'll just put in like a really super low bid. I'm sure I'll be outbid, and I'll just forget about it. And then I like wake up the next day and check my eBay options, and like, Oh, damn, I really do not think I'd win that auction, but nobody else bid. Sweet, I just scored like an item for like next to nothing. So um, that's sometimes like uh, how I end up winning, like it's sometimes how I end up buying new stuff. Like I kind of shouldn't buy any more of it, but I just put in like a super low bill, a super low ball best offer or just, or just set like a bid and just forget about it, thinking I'm gonna get outbid and then I just end up, end up winning. I'm like, cool. And I think that's kind of what happened here as well. Like this is probably going to be a, is this a two? Yeah, this is a UM200 Electrosonics transmitter. And again, like, yeah, it's a Electrosonics UM200B. And again, I probably have enough of the UM200 series. Um, and because it is kind of annoying, nine volts powering. And um, yeah, anyway. Um, although I must say, if I switch this sort of bulky clip, you can see here that I really don't like, although it is super firm. If I switch it so I have um, a wire clip instead that I can buy um, still, I need to buy a few wire clips. If I can get the wire clip instead, I just like that a lot more because it's much thinner profile and, and it's not so, um, yeah, it's easier to hide. So anyway, yeah, like that's basically like how I, how I got these two items that just arrived. There were two separate auctions, but in each case, like, it's like, whoops, okay, I won that for next to nothing. Sweet. Nobody else bid on it. Of course, now I'm talking about it. Everybody else is going to go out and, like, look for, for these auctions on, on eBay as well for, 
you know, a 200 series Supersonics transmitter receiver. And so hopefully all you guys will keep on outbidding me so that I will never accidentally win one of these auctions again. Um, anyway. Because, yeah, definitely, like, if, if you can get yourself, you can definitely get yourself a 200 series transmitter and receiver for much, much cheaper than what a brand new G3 wireless costs. And a 200 series Ectrosonics, although it's a bit older, is undoubtedly a much better buy for you. Um, in fact, you can probably, if you're patient and hunt hard and get lucky like I have, pick up a 200 series Ectrosonics transmitter and receiver for less than what the average second hand price of a G3 wireless is. So, yeah, go for it. Go, go, go outbid me on these auctions so I don't end up buying any more. It'll be really appreciated. Thanks. And um, was that part of the same, same thing? Oh, oh yes, 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 yes. Oh my God, this is awesome. Fuck, I completely forgot that I, I got these. So, where did this even come from? Is that just one thing I've unboxed? Or these two things? Oh yeah, no, no, I, I put this together. So, I just forgot. So this actually doesn't come with a lav. I mean, that lav was the one I got from Toyota, which is a separate article. Separate box. There's a new box I just opened. There, I was looking at it, and of course I got the antenna here, the the two with the BNC connections for the um, receiver, and the one with the SMA connection here for the um, transmitter. But here's a cool part. Here's a cool part. They also so that, so quite often when you buy into the second hand, if if you get lucky, they they're giving you a lav with it, which is sweet because it's like extra value, extra added value. You might have to spend fifty or hundred bucks buying yourself otherwise. And, um, but, so this one didn't come with a lab, but it came with this cable, which is a 5-pin mini XLR female to 3-pin full-size XLR female. This is what I was really been wanting lately in terms of, um, just for my wireless berm transmitter, because I kind of, the gain staging I was having was sort of working, but it will work better if I have this cable, and hopefully this cable is wired up for line level input because you can have exactly the same cable, you know, the ends and everything, but you can't switch between line level and mic level in. It's just the sake of doing different wiring inside the cable. So I think it'll be there. So yeah, th this, this cable is exactly what I want to use tomorrow. I'm going to, um, yeah, heck, look at that. I, I came down to pick this up for tomorrow, the LMB to miss it, but I, I picked up another cool cable I'm very excited about. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, so basically what I'm going to have is that my berm op, or, or, or have, I'll have, have, have this berm and the microphone at the end will come down to the Sound Devices M, which one do I have? Well, uh, the Sound Devices MM1. So yeah, there's two of them. I started off with the MP1, and then the MM1 is a newer one that's got a future features. Although, I, I realized today, the MM1 actually drops one feature. So the MP1, the older one, you could set it so that you'd have phantom power off, but now, with the newer sound devices MP1, it has a bunch more features, but it lost the feature of turning off phantom power. So you can only do 12 volts or, tw or, or, or um, 48 volts. Um, so, you know, but there was no option to just turn phantom power off completely. So I'm like, wow, I'm surprised that you went back in features, but never, they were just, which it sort of made life a little bit difficult for me when I was, I was trying to um, uh, try something out early this afternoon. But, oh well, whatever. Um, Still, yeah, strange. Um, yeah, so then, then basically, um, from the sound devices M, M1, you have a line output, and this line output then gets fed into this, that will then get transmitted back to my bag, where I will receive this and record what my berm op is recording, um, or putting the mic out. So anyway, that, that's how all that stuff works. Let's just move on and open up the third parcel. Which is some, um, I don't know, I don't know, just a mystery that I will discover and get all excited about again, like I did just now. So yeah, huh, look at that, even though like, I don't need any more 200 series Ultrasonics, I have enough, I should just stop ex accidentally buying them and put my money elsewhere. Uh, it was actually really good timing, because it came with a cable that, that I really need. <laughs> Uh, I was meaning to make up one of those cables myself. I bought a soldering iron last week as well. Um, and... What? 
the hell is this? Oh! 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 Man, this is, this is, this is just a good day I'm having today. Unboxing all this stuff away for now. So this here is the latest iPod Touch, whichever fifth generation or something. Yeah, so I have got the new Zoom F8N, still the only one in all of New Zealand, um, I believe. And um, although with the F8 getting its big firmware update, it does kind of like kill the reason for um, having an F8. I mean, F18, because F8 and F18 are quite similar now. But I still have a few, few features up my sleeve that the FN keeps. Anyway, um, focusing. And so they have an uh, app you can use with it. But the app only works with Apple devices, which sucks, because I'm an Android guy. So I don't have um, really any Apple. You know, well, I have, I have an iPhone for my other job, but that's kind of like locked to that. Anyway, so... Um, I kind of have to buy an Apple device, so I don't need to buy an iPhone, I just simply need to be able to run the app. So an iPod Touch is perfect for that scenario. Um, so I don't have any extra cellular needs because I can just use my normal uh, cell phone that uh, I'm recording myself with. And Aperture Alav at work down there un under my bed recording my voice into the phone. And so, um, yeah, so, so the... the blah, blah, blah. The iPod Touch here is basically you pick it up for like dirt cheap second hand. It's like a hundred and sixty bucks or something. I can't remember what I paid, but it was maybe it was less than a hundred. It was really, really cheap. And, and, and it's, it's the latest iPod Touch, and so it just does all the functions I need for the app for the Zoom F8 in. Um, like why do I need to make phone calls and stuff? I don't. It's just it's just gonna be this one dedicated purpose that this is gonna be for. It's for my sound recording. And it just will allow me to enter metadata quickly. It allows me to just sort of keep an eye on you know, each screen to uh, watch levels and so forth. And allows me to sort of start and stop the recorder remotely. This is really handy when I did a job with the F8 early this year because it was a virtual reality shoot. So I could never be inside of the camera, but I have to drop the recorder under the camera because that's where the mic is. And so this allowed me to stop and start the recorder without even being there. Very useful. And of course, watch, watch the meters during the take. And then I had like a stereo uh, wireless monitoring as well. And anyway, enough probably of this. But I will say, I have also ordered the iPod mini, um, sorry, the iPad mini. So it's a much bigger screen. And the iPad mini would be more for when maybe I'm sitting down at a desk or when I, mean, I put out a little cart. But the iPod touch will be just to be able to keep a little in my bag I can pull out easily. So that's why I thought I'll, I'll get two different um, screen sizes depending upon the kind of job I'm doing, if I want a small screen or a bigger screen. And um, plus also, you know, they act as like a backup for each other. Anyway, that's enough about that. On to the very last item to open up of the four that was in my repackaged um, uh, shipment for my reshipper. And of course, we already know what is in here because... Well, it says on the outside, it says Electrosonic L&B. I'm actually surprised. They're like, why is this box so big just to hold a small transmitter? Um, I did just buy the one, didn't I? Oh, uh, anyway, so the l &B, it's it's a wideband transmitter. And being wideband, rather than the earlier narrow bands, it actually covers three blocks. So this is the, the C1 wideband, which is the equivalent to the uh, 24, 25, 26 narrow band of the past. Man, I'm really struggling to open this up, aren't I? Um, and so that's still, that's basically 600 megahertz covered, which is going to be illegal over in America, but it's all good here in New Zealand. Fingers crossed for now. I'd be pretty mad if uh, all my money goes to waste and we lose it. Ah, so that's what like the box looks like. Mostly packaging. And we got this warranty. And okay, how to set gain correctly. Yeah, this interesting point about like when the little red light flashes. They changed that at some point, I think maybe between the, the UM200 and the UM200B or something like that, because people were apparently 
being too conservative and not letting the red light flash occasionally so that they change like how it's meant to um, work out when, when the white gain is setting on your transmitter. So that's a big Wow, it is really nicely packaged up. Has the guy even used this before? He must have, because, um, oh yeah, wow. He really kept this, I mean this basically looks close to brand new, you know, it's all, all the packaging is set up exactly how you would expect. And so yeah, anyway, going on about the LMB, I might as well talk a little bit about it, because I am very excited to get the LMB. It is, it is, for now, I mean, I kind of got another nicer one, it hasn't arrived yet, but as of ones I can hold in my hand with me here in New Zealand, it is my nicest transmitter I've ever got in my life um, that I've, I've earned. And um, so yeah, it, it is the wideband one, and so it runs on two AA batteries, so nice on the engine to like put up with 9 volts anymore. And um, so yeah, it's kind of similar in, in shape and size to the older LM and LMA, which I, I've got a couple of. But the LMB basically, rather than sort of putting up with this kind of annoying hexadecimal method of setting this, so basically you, you change this by one step, that's like the big um, 1.6 megahertz step and that's a 100 kilohertz step, you know, you just sort of, yeah, enter it with a hexadecimal value. And then it's the same over on this side and um, there, more hexadecimals. Um, so you need a very small little like jewelry sized uh, screwdriver to change the gain on that. You've got to always carry that with you. Um, anyway, so this basically is nice like screen. Look at that. A screen and buttons. You can press to change the gain. So really cool like that. Um, so in the initial lot of wideband that they brought out, they had the LMB and the LT, I think a little while after the... SSM or something, or maybe it was the SMM or whatever, anyway, SSM. So those were the different wideband transmitters they had. And so the, this was basically the cheapest of their wideband ones. So it, it is the most modern transmitter they have compared to, you know, some of my older stuff. So it is like a modern current one, but it's kind of like their, their lowest end one. So the downsides to it means that, for instance, the antenna is just fixed here. So you can't replace that easily. But that's okay, it's meant to be like very strong, very tough. Um, unlike this one, you know, you can screw off the antenna. Uh, where's the antenna gone? It's in here. And so you've got an SMA connection there. Uh, you probably heard quite often people have like modded their G3s to have an SMA connection. It's quite handy actually. Um, and so, yeah, so that's one downside of it. Another downside is that the remote control app, so on, on your phone, like for instance, not necessarily a phone or even you know your iPod Touch, you can have an app that will play out these sounds into um, the lav microphone that the person is wearing and will send it to it and basically sends instructions to the transmitter to change to this frequency or change the gain level or even go to sleep so you save battery life. So there's lots of really cool sort of remote control functions you can have. Um, Kind of like what Zaxnet has, but you can't do it from your recorder. You need to actually walk up to, to the actor and like play this little like dweedle tone, dweedle dee, dweedle dee. And uh, the transmitter will sort of recognize it. So all of the, not just the current generation, but also like the last generation, I think even the generation after, before that. So anything more modern than, than the UM400 basically. They're all capable of this, which is really cool, except for this one. Um, so that's one downside to being, you know, it lacks that really cool feature and it's got a fixed antenna. And also, you can't go up to like 250 megawatts. I think um, you've just got a max of 100 megawatts. So, um, not megawatts, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, 100 milliwatts. Pfft. We'd be dying if you're transmitting off 250 megawatts. Yeah, it's 100, 100 milliwatts is, is the max you can transmit on this, which is like perfectly normal. Um, so, yeah, it, it just lacks some of the most fanciest of fancy features, but otherwise for like all your normal everyday stuff you use all the time, it has got everything. So it's really a very good value choice if you want the latest Etosonics that's wideband. Because I think these retail at around maybe a thousand American, but I got a good price on the second hand. Even though like, man, you saw it when I opened this box, it looked like it was brand new, all like perfectly exactly how you see it in the packaging. What's this instruction manual? Oh yeah, so you can see here, these were the initial ones they released. So that, that was the 
um, our T transmitter and the, our LR transmitter. Anyway, since then they have finally brought out um, like the SM SMQV wideband version because um, it's kind of like it's a bit difficult to sort of make wideband versions of narrow band ones. So when you've got wideband, you're sort of accepting like a wider range of possible frequencies that might sort of interfere. So anyway, the electronic stuff it gets a little bit more complex. But anyway, um, Neversonics did, did bring out more wideband transmitters. Um, I should just probably shut up about this. Um, I probably talked about all the different things. Have you got any more questions about what I was saying? Because I didn't talk for long enough. Ask in the comments below. Like the video if you liked it. Give it a dislike if I talked for too long. Probably did. And goodbye. I'll see you next time.